the Queen once opened up on any prospect of abdication to former Archbishop of Canterbury George Carey. Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee message gave the clearest indication yet that preparation is well underway for life after Queen Elizabeth II. She called for the Duchess of Cornwall to be known as Queen Camilla when Prince Charles becomes King. It had previously been expected that Camilla would be known as Princess Consort upon Charles's accession to the throne, owing to the sensitivities around a title that was destined for the late Princess Diana. The Queen is the fourth longest reigning monarch in history, and surpassed Queen Victoria as the UK's longest reigning monarch seven years ago. Even with her 96th birthday just around the corner, she is extremely unlikely to ever step down as monarch, instead choosing to devote her entire life to her country. Former Archbishop of Canterbury, Lord Carey, told an unofficial biography of Her Majesty that she opened up on the prospect of abdication in a brief conversation with him. Sally Bedell Smith wrote Elizabeth the Queen to coincide with the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, and was based on 200 interviews with relatives, friends, courtiers and politicians. Ms Bedell Smith said, when Carey went to her to say he was ready to retire as Archbishop of Canterbury in 2002, she sighed and said, oh, that's something I can't do. I am going to carry on to the end. Royal experts have echoed the view that the Queen will not abdicate in more recent years, even after the death of her beloved husband Prince Philip. Dr Ed Owens, royal expert and historian, told Express.co.uk that it is very unlikely the Queen would ever step down, since abdication is considered a bad word in the royal family. He explained that the events of 1936, when her estranged uncle Edward VIII abdicated, left a bad taste in royal mouths. Edward VIII wanted to marry American divorcee Wallace Simpson, but both the government of the time and the Church of England would not allow it. He chose the love of his life over being king, so his younger brother became king, taking the title of King George VI. This scandal, Dr. Owens said, is the reason why any future abdication is almost certainly off the cards. He said, I think it is highly unlikely unless a future monarch of Britain is physically unable to perform the role or they bring the monarchy into disrepute and therefore essentially resign and pass on the role of monarch in the hope that it will ensure the survival of the crown. He added, if she was to become very unwell, it might be that Elizabeth II essentially retires from all public roles handing over power and leadership of the monarchy to her successor as part of what is termed a regency. There is more recent precedent for this going back to the late 18th century when George III's eldest son ruled as his proxy due to the monarch's ill health. This position was echoed by royal expert Angela Levin. She told GB News last month that Charles knows his mother will not abdicate unless things take a turn for the worst. She said, this is what she promised in her early 20s when she became the monarch and she's very religious. She asked God to help her and I don't think she'll want to cross that path. But I also imagine she's got a lot of common sense and if she's then ill or she feels that her mind is not working sharply as it still is, she might do something. Buckingham Palace confirmed on Tuesday morning that the Queen is returning to work after a Covid scare. Her Majesty tested positive for the virus on February 20th, with symptoms said to have been mild. Some virtual engagements were cancelled but she continued with light duties, and enjoyed an afternoon with her nearest and dearest over the weekend after receiving the all clear. While the Queen has no intention of stepping down, she has gradually relinquished some duties to other royals. Charles, the longest serving heir apparent in history, has been the power behind the throne for some time, royal expert Howard Hodgson told Express.co.uk. He said, the power behind the throne, for a long time now, has been the Prince of Wales and not anyone else. The fact is, until maybe ten years ago, the Duke of Edinburgh had a lot of say in these things.